Question 2A. Nitrogen monoxide reacts with ozone, and this is the equation. This reaction is first order with respect to NO, and first order with respect to O3, the ozone. This is the very important information when we want to uh, give the rate equation. And the <clears throat> rate constant is given. So this value, 11500. Okay, part 1. Complete the rate equations for this reaction. Okay, this one is very easy. Uh, we just need to consider the reactant. So now we have two reactants, the NO and the O3. Because it's the first order for both, so it's power 1, so it's not shown. Okay, therefore, you just need to put uh, rate equal to the K constant times the, this uh, concentration of NO okay, times concentration of the ozone. Right. Okay, so this one is very easy. Part 2. A reaction is carried out in which the initial concentration for NO and the ozone they are both 1.2 times 10 positive 6. Calculate the initial rate of reaction and state its unit. So you just need to substitute the values, the K constant and the concentration to the rate equations in part 1. So just substitute 11500 okay, and 1.2 times 10 positive 6 square. So you get uh, 1.66 time, times 10 positive 8. Uh, of course, the most for the rate of reaction is all is going to be mole per dm cube per second. Part three, the reaction described in A two is monitored over a period of time. Predict whether or not the graph of N O against time under this condition shows the reaction has constant half life. Okay, so this statement or. Um, is actually has uh, some uh, indirect information means it's actually telling you that uh, if the reaction or the reactant is has the first order so it's going to have a constant half life because this uh, reaction is has two reactant and they are both first order so the overall order is actually second order. If let's say the O3, the ozone is not in excess, means uh, the NO and O3, they just react and eventually the rate will change accordingly. If the O3 is not in excess, then the reaction means the rate equations will follow this. If now the question, uh, let's say, is mentioned, the ozone is really in excess, large amount, so therefore the reaction equation might change. So it's, uh, it might change to rate equal to K times concentration of NO if the ozone is really in excess. But in this question, the ozone never say that it's in excess, so it will just follow the rate equations in part one, which they are both first order and the overall is second order. Okay, so therefore, the half-life is not going to be a constant half-life because constant half-life is just for the first order reaction only. So answer, of course, the prediction is not constant. Why? Because the reaction is has a second order now, not first order. We must consider ozone because ozone is not in excess. Part B, nitrous oxide. Uh, N2O decomposed into its elements, uh, nitrogen and oxygen. At high temperature, a small amount of platinum wire is added to a large amount of nitrous oxide. The reaction followed zero order kinetics, zero order. And platinum wire behave as a catalyst. Part 1. Sketch a graph on uh, the axis below 
of the reaction rate against the time for the catalyzed decomposition of uh, N2O. Okay, so I already told you this one is zero order. So you must know the difference between the uh, graphs. If let's say uh, it's asking concentration versus time, then you draw this. Because now is the rate, reaction rate versus time. So we know that zero order kinetics, its rate must be constant over time. Means you just need to draw one straight line. Okay, it shows that the constant uh, rate reaction over time. Okay, just, just a straight line. If let's say now is asking uh, the draw the concentration of the reactant versus time, uh, then it will be a negative constant means it's a constant gradient. So because the N2O, the nitrous oxide, is a reactant, it will decrease. So uh, it's decreased and its rates will follow this, right? This constant gradient. Okay, means uh, for part two, when you sketch this concentration of uh, nitrous oxide versus time, so it's be it's going to be a constant gradient. Okay, it must be a negative because it's decreasing, right? This one is always for the reactant or the reaction with the zero order. Means rate it's equal to the k constant only uh, okay this this one is uh, of course is used for the the previous one uh, means this one is clearer so rate is uh, equal to the k constant because the concentration of the nitrous oxide is um, the, the the orders for the nitrous oxide is zero order Right, so rate is equal to a constant, and because uh, now uh, is asked about to sketch this one concentration versus time, so the rate also need to be constant over time. So means uh, because this one is the mole per dm cube, mole per dm cube, and this is the time. Let's say is second. So means when you try to find the gradient, means it's the mole per dm cube per second. Means the rate also need to be constant, right, over time. Uh, so that's why when you try to sketch the, the graph, which is a zero order, you just uh, you just uh, sketch like this, concentration versus time. Okay, so it's a constant gradient like this. Okay, part three. Platinum behave as a heterogeneous catalyst in this uh, reaction. Describe the mode of action of the heterogeneous uh, catalyst. Uh, this is the general uh, description about the heterogeneous catalyst. Um, if let's say you want to relate this uh, the action of heterogeneous catalyst to the reaction, yes, you can. Uh, before we discuss further, so let's uh, show you this diagram, how the uh, heterogeneous catalyst works. First, the reactant, uh, in this case is the N2O, right? So the reactant need to diffuse and need to approach the catalyst surface. After that, uh, it need to adsorb on the surface, means uh, adsorptions need to happen. The reactant need to adsorb on the surface, and after that, the bonds between the reactants it will get weakened. And after that, the reactions between the reactants happen, bond formation, and form products, and the products will diffuse from the surface. Uh, of course, this diagram or this uh, picture. Uh, it's not really for the N two O. It's just a general diagram uh, on the for the action of heterogeneous catalysis. So means it's it's going to be adsorption on the surface, reaction between the particles, and after that, once the products form, it need to undergo desorption. Means the products diffused from the uh, catalyst surface. 
So these these are the three actions that uh, uh, involved in the heterogeneous catalysis. Okay, so let's uh, move back to this part, uh, which is the the one that uh, we want to discuss. Okay, first reactants at salt to the surface. Uh, you can actually mention. Uh, if you want to relate to this uh, decomposition of uh, nitrous oxide, you can say that the N2O, the nitrous oxide, adsorbed to the surface of catalyst, the platinum catalyst. Okay, after that, the bonds within the N2O molecules within uh, uh, weaken and break. So after that, reaction occur, and a new bonds formations in the products. The products is uh, you can say that is nitrogen and oxygen. After that, the nitrogen and oxygen now they are dissolved from the catalyst surface. These are the three uh, action that you need to mention. Right, in this uh, the action of heterogeneous catalyst. Part four. Uh, part four is actually uh, is a kind of like a critical thinking question. Is to test uh, how well you understand the reaction. Okay. Suggest a reason why this reaction has zero kinetics, uh, zero yeah, uh, order kinetics, when the amount of nitrous oxide is large, and the platinum amount is small. Actually, you can imagine, let's say, now uh, we have uh, uh, reactions or reactor. Uh, the NO2 particles is a lot inside there, NO2 a lot. And the catalyst is just a small amount. Small amount means uh, the catalyst surface or the active site is always being occupied. Because the nitrous oxide is really in excess, a large amount. Means the catalyst surface is always uh, occupied or always uh, with the reactants and of course uh, after reaction is products. Means continuously the catalyst is active site, it has the reactants and products and it's always moving when the catalyst is has the uh, the large amount of reactants so therefore the rate is going to be always the same because it's continuously the same amount of the reactants involved uh, this is the key because continuously the same amount of reactant in this case is n2o involved and reacts on the catalyst surface when the amount is always the same because it's large amount so therefore the rate okay, is, is a constant rate so that's why it's zero order now, that, that's how the things works yeah? I hope you understand okay, and thank you